Anyway, I'll be very quick. Um, the last meeting was a Skipper's Landing meeting, remembering Skipper's Landing, Harry and Stella Pillinger, and there's uh, some folders over there, and some flyers, you can take uh, uh, articles that were written about Harry and also about Stella. Uh, interesting also, uh, Oscar Oslo in the back, uh, did he film that? So if you didn't get to the meeting, you can go to YouTube, go to YouTube, and just type in Skipper's Landing, Whitehall, Michigan, and it'll come up and uh, you'll, you'll see that program. Uh, anyway, and also thanks to Oscar for doing it. He, he's, he's in the back if you don't know Oscar. He's done some <laughs> he's also doing tonight's meeting. And, uh, and you know, t it's interesting because basically that I went to a community foundation, Chris, uh, last year, and uh, I met Dave Paquette, and he was the guy who wrote the article, which was on the table over there for the Riparian magazine, Michigan Riparian magazine. And so I said, you know, would you, could you? give a talk, and he said uh, a year ago, you know, he's always, yeah, I can do that, but obviously he realizes now all the time and effort it took to put this together. But anyway, uh, that was back in 2013, so uh, this here we are, and uh, he basically uh, has an investment company, he's from Hinsdale, Illinois. Uh, he'll say more about his story, but basically, it, it's, it's so interesting because he starts out as, as, as a scout at Wadamingo, all right? And that somehow, you know, away you come and, and it starts a whole new chapter. And, um, and it, it seems that, you know, th this summer I realized more and more that somehow, you know, White Lake is where people come and they may be all over the world, but somehow they come back to White Lake during the summer and it's very important. And, you know, like people who live here, like I was raised here, you know, you, okay, the lake's always there, so what's special about that? But the answer is, uh, it's very special for a lot of people who come out, you know, they're corporate or whatever, they're all over, but somehow they come back and uh, here you are in, in White Lake. So, I would uh, take my minute and stop and say, Dave, come on up and let's go. Well, I think I've said it all, that basically uh, Dave can come forward and say uh, how and where and what, and uh, away we go. Dave Paquette. My wife and I have uh, had a home on the lake for 32 years, and my first uh, summer here, as Roger said, was as a scout at uh, Camp Chihuahua in 1963. Uh, I had the opportunity to be on staff uh, their last year and, and caretaker, and so uh, Duck Lake has been a special place for, for quite a few years. <clears throat> Before I really start my talk, I thought I would just, uh, you know, one thing that we all really uh, admire about uh, Duck Lake is Duck Lake Channel and how uh, photographic it is. And I've been a uh, collector of, of postcards for quite some time. All the photos that you see tonight are basically postcards. But the first, earliest postcard that I have is 1932, black and white, uh, 1934. Um, and again, you've probably seen these around, but uh, 1950, 53, 54, 61, and uh, 64, 68, all very familiar pictures, all the way up to uh, some nice aerial shots here the last couple of years. Uh, Duck Lake, known for its clear waters, quiet setting, award-winning sunsets. It's roughly 270 acres in size, uh, two miles long, one mile wide, four and a half miles of shoreline, uh, and an average depth of uh, 25 to uh, 60 feet. So it's a, obviously a very special very special place. What I'm going to talk about tonight is uh, the history of Duck Lake really spans 200 years. It's rich in, in a, a lot of success stories of, of hardworking immigrants from Europe that came to this country to make life better for them and their families. And uh, we were very fortunate to uh, have many of those come and, and settle in, in the Duck Lake area. Uh, what I'm really going to focus on tonight is some of the earlier settlers uh, of the area and, and the boom of the uh, resort business that um, really got the lake uh, started and, and introduced an awful lot of people to, uh, to our area in the, in the first part of the 1900s. The very first settler was, was really a, a fur trader. Um, 1790, Joe La Frambais was a uh, agent for the John Jacob Astor Fur Company, and they ran a, uh, a number of um, uh, 
fur stations up and down the west coast of, of Michigan. And uh, Duck Lake was one of the places that they had put a, a cabin. Um, the Indian name is Jibshi, I can't pronounce it, but Sagajan is the Indian name for Duck Lake. Um, they had a uh, cabin on the lake. It was um, approximately 14 by 16 feet, made of clay, uh, had a chimney. Um, it, it was a trading post. And in 1806, Joseph was killed by Indians in, in Lowell, Michigan. And then his wife took over the, the uh, fur trading business. And she was actually a, a French Canadian and the Iowa uh, Indian parents grew up in Grand Haven and a uh, very, very bright uh, woman and obviously uh, 200 years ago uh, uh, it was a pretty impressive uh, thing for her to come in and take, take control of our, or take over her husband's fur business. And <clears throat> subsequently in 1818 she sold her fur business her uh, trapping business to uh, the Astor Company, uh, quote unquote, for a small fortune. She retired to uh, Mackinac and did a lot of charitable work, uh, was known uh, for a lot of her charity work. She passed away in 1846, but it's interesting, her, her legacy carried on for quite some time. And in 18, or 1984, uh, Michigan elected her to the Woman's Hall of Fame, which is pretty impressive because that was a hundred plus years after she was gone. So the first settler that we all know is Charles Mears, obviously a very familiar name in the uh, in, in the area. He in 1844 he came from Massachusetts. He purchased property at the mouth of Duck Lake, built a dam. Uh, right about where the Duck Lake Bridge is right now. A sawmill, a boarding house, a store, a blacksmith shop, a stable. Um, his lumbering camp originally was known as the Middle House. And in 1856, he built a, a three-story uh, boarding house. And it was the hamlet really, uh, at one point was called Cork Point. Um, long before uh, being called Duck Lake. And for a number of years, it was the main trading post for both uh, white settlers and Ottawa Indians in the area. This is a <coughs> probably the oldest uh, picture that, that I've seen on, on Duck Lake. Uh, it was in a, a book published by uh, Charles Mears' daughter. Um, this is approximately 1850, and what, what you have here, this is, this is Duck Lake right here. This is what would be seen drive. Here is, is the channel that's going uh, out to Lake Michigan. And what you have here, buildings along the side, you have a barn right here, which is this picture. And then the boarding house was up here. This is a very old picture as well. It's a little difficult to see. Uh, perhaps right now, but you can see the barn in the background. There's actually a black Labrador dog on a dog house right here, and this is the boarding house. So these pictures go back, um, back to the 1850s. For 25 years, Charles Mears was the recognized leader and businessman in the area. During this time, he purchased over 40,000 acres of timber, uh, much of it for $1.25 an acre from the government, and 2,000 acres plus just in the Duck Lake area. Uh, he constructed and operated 15 sawmills in, in, uh, from basically from here up to Manistee. He built five harbors in, for transport of, of lumber. Um, one was actually at the mouth. There was a, a large dock that he would bring in. He had a schooner called Propeller. That was a hundred foot schooner that would come in and dock at, uh, at the mouth of, of Duck Lake and they would load their lumber there. And um, so that uh, schooner would get three or four schooners. They'd go to Chicago, unload the wood, and then they'd bring back uh, goods back this way. Legacy of, of Mears, he served in the state senate. He was an early member of this newly founded political party called the Republican Party. He was a personal friend of Abraham Lincoln. In uh, 1858, two of the sawmills were destroyed by fire on, on, uh, on Duck Lake, um, reportedly by some uh, uh, 
uh, hostile unpaid laborers is, is how it read. But uh, what was in interesting is uh, when those uh, sawmills burned down, there were over 10,000 logs in from the spring cut in Duck Lake that were just uh, sitting and, and waiting. So he, um, he, he bought another uh, sawmill in Chicago and he brought it up on a train to, uh, to Whitehall and then he, he bought a, a mile of uh, track. And so his laborers would put in a mile of track, they'd drive the train down a mile, then they'd tear up the track behind it, put, it, <laughs> put in, because he didn't want to spend the money, he just wanted to get the sawmill here. It was big and heavy, it was a big steam mill. So that's kind of a, a unique uh, aspect, pretty uh, interesting actually. But, um, you know, by the uh, late 1800s, uh, the area had been, uh, timber had all been lumbered off, and. Um, Everybody moved on, and, and uh, that kind of led to the to the next uh, next era in, in the history of Duck Lake. The, the the first this is interesting, but the first map that um, that I've seen is this 1837 map, and you can see Duck Lake over here. But the, the first newspaper headline, um, one of the things that I enjoy doing is it's collecting the postcards, but also collecting newspaper, and now with the internet you can have an awful lot of access to newspaper articles and uh, the first thing that I've ever seen was in the Grand Haven News in 1859 and it was reporting on the progress of a survey team that was going up the west side of Michigan and they made the comment that um, uh, there were several inter enterprising lumbering villages along the lake one of which was Duck Lake so that is kind of the first time that Duck Lake was really in the, in the press at least what I've seen. Um, it's also interesting that uh, for a couple of years there was a post office in Duck Lake and the early records show that the postmaster, Mr. Townsend, he was um, uh, postmaster for the village of, of Duck Lake, but back then Stephen County wasn't incorporated, so back in, the, in that period of time we were in Ottawa County. And so the post office was Ottawa County, not, uh, not Muskegon County. And uh, for whatever reason, probably just a uh, lack of demand, it was opened in 1856 and it was closed in 1858. And uh, uh, this is actually a quote from the uh, archives of the post office in uh, Washington, D.C., and they have a little history of, uh, of every little post office. And so for two years, we had a post office. One of the first uh, settlers <clears throat> that really made their mark after Charles Mears, that he had gone on and, and to other parts of Michigan to, to lumber, and that was uh, Henry Snyder. Uh, he was one of the prominent founding settlers of, of the area, <clears throat> and we, we all know that the, the Snyder house is on the, on the uh, corner of Saint Drive and, and Duck Lake Road on the uh, southeast corner. But this is a <clears throat> this is a plot map back in 1877. Here's Duck Lake. This is in essence what would be Duck Lake Road, although it wasn't a road at this point in time. But Snyder's owned this whole plot of, of property along the lake. He was born in Germany in 1837, <clears throat> first settled in, in Chicago, uh, worked, saved money, came here when he was 20 years old. He actually was a lumberjack for Charlie Mears. And then he built a log cabin um, and eventually took title to that in 1870. And, and his history has, has made its mark uh, one of the first uh, successful settlers <clears throat> in, in the Duck Lake area. It's um, uh, many of the early people that settled in the Duck Lake area all were from Europe, many German, um, many from. Uh, uh, Sweden and, and other parts of, of Europe, but uh, the, the very common thread was would, they would come here, generally the, the male would come first, the man would come first, they would stop in Chicago because there was a lot of ethnic support for, for the Germans and, and for the Swedish, and, and uh, they all had their, their little enclaves in Chicago, they would work for a year or two, get familiar, and then they would, would come up here. One of the things that Snyder's did is put in an uh, uh, awful lot of fruit farms and, and, and peaches and, and apples and uh, a lot of, of uh, raspberries. 
And so uh, you'll see in some slides in a, in a little bit <clears throat> all the lumber um, from, from Lake Michigan, as far as you can see east along Duck Lake Road was all beach sand, no, no trees, just, and so they, uh, the Snyders were one of the first families that put in uh, uh, fruit and raspberries was the pro prominent uh, crop that, that they would grow. Um, it was uh, advantageous because there was steamer uh, service between Chicago and here that would bring tourists over and could bring the produce back to Chicago. So here's an ad in, in uh, 1922. This is an actual postcard uh, on the um, uh, berry pickers. And this is the barn, that's the uh, uh, Snyder barn. But they were looking to hire pickers, six cents a uh, quart. Uh, you got a tent, a bed, and uh, your free meals. So uh, a little different different time. Here's, um, here's the existing uh, old Snyder homestead. It's now Terry and Kim and own that. Um, and this is a, a picture of a couple of the Snyder brothers in the 1912, and, and the home uh, was built, I believe, in 19, 1910. Another map, about 20 years later, uh, 1877, <clears throat> you can see uh, Duck Lake Road is not in yet. Uh, this is just a survey line. What was in was, was a road along the lake. And then an Indian trail that went to uh, went to Whitehall, and then, and then another uh, trail that went up to the to the channel. But you can start to see some of the names that, that come into play here. Now Snyder's own all this property. Uh, Mir still owns uh, property north of the lake. Non-resident that's still owned by the government. Um, and you see Mears and some of the other names that uh, it, it's. Uh, Duck Lake Road was, was not, uh, not in place yet. This is a census, again, the beauty of the internet, but you can uh, get a lot of the U.S. census from years past. And so what uh, I did some work on uh, who was living along Duck Lake Road, who some of the early people were and where they came from. This is 1900. This, this basically is um, starts at Scenic Drive with the Snyders. Now, in, by 1900, um, Mr. Snyder had passed away, and, and uh, his wife uh, was at the homestead. But you can barely see here. This is where people are from, but it's Germany, 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 Germany. So, uh, the, the Heinz family. Uh, this is going up Duck Lake Road East. So you have the Snyders down here. The Heinz family is on the roster at turn of the century, and, and Hesse, which is another big name. And, and these will, uh, you know, you'll see they were very prominent in the uh, resort industry on the lake. 20 years later, again, another census study. Um, again, if, if this is difficult to see, but um, many, 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 the, the majority of everyone was from Europe. But now we have the Snyders, the Hines, uh, Walter's family now is, is in place and they had a, a large, uh, a large uh, resort. And then uh, uh, Rudolph Rubin is also a resort owner and they were from, from Sweden. <clears throat> One of the things that was uh, important in, in bringing tourists to the area was the fact uh, two things really, and the first was that the road system was improving. This is a very old slide of, uh, of Scenic Drive. This is 1927, and they're, they're putting in, um, this area right here is, is blown up a little bit, but again, it's a little difficult to see, but this is an old steam tractor. These are laborers, and they're pouring uh, Scenic Drive uh, initially uh, was a, a dirt uh, road, but then the first time it was paved, it was hand poured cement, and and it was uh, took them a couple years. It was done by the Muskegon County Road Commission, and eventually what? Um, so this was seen drive down to uh, Muskegon, but then there was a, a road that had come up from Chicago uh, along the lake, and, and so that that was good for the tourist uh, industry, especially our area. This is an old ad in uh, the Chicago Tribune in, in 1917. Uh, one of the very important aspects of, of the 
tourist trade here was the steamship system. And so the Goodrich uh, Steamship <coughs> Company ran uh, steamers every day from Chicago to uh, White Lake. And um, you, it would take, a, they'd leave at night, you'd leave about quarter to eight at night and you'd get at six o'clock in the morning and they ran every day. And so a lot of uh, families would come and stay here in the summer. And then the men would work in Chicago, come over uh, on uh, Friday night, go back on Monday night. And um, it, it's kind of interesting, you, you could uh, get a, a room at one of the resorts for eight to ten dollars for a week. The steamer ride was about six or seven dollars, and that would include a, 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 a bunk. This this is a <clears throat> ad that was pretty prevalent for quite some time. They would run this in White Lake, would run this in in um, uh, Chicago Tribune, but Lakeside Inn is a, is a uh, Duck Lake. Um, uh, Lakeside Inn is, is on the south side of, of uh, White Lake, but Duck Lake Resort was a um, resort we'll talk about. You see Silver Beach, so there's familiar names here. <coughs> Michelin the Landing, if you look over here, this is Lakeside Inn. Th these are the, the steamers that, that um, we, we go back and forth. These are 280 to 320 feet long. I mean, these are really big. Um, I guess cruise ship might not be the accurate, but here's a picture of, of one of the dining rooms. I mean, they were very nice uh, uh, facilities. You'd come over, um, the, the men would play cards and smoke cigars and, and uh, stay up all night on Friday nights coming over to visit their families, and then they'd go back on Monday night and uh, go back to Chicago and, and work. But the combination of, of the Transportation was key for our area. Uh, road systems improved, but was the, I mean, better uh, transportation by water than we have now, actually. So the, the, the boats would come in two or three different places. Um, the previous uh, Michelin dock was White Lakeside Inn. Then there was what was called the, the city dock in Whitehall, which was between uh, on the causeway between Montague and in Whitehall, and they would come in and dock there, and then there was just all sorts of, of small um, uh, launches, water taxis, and even some big. Now this is this is Lakeside Inn here. You can see a huge dock system. Uh, th this ship right here was about a 50-foot uh, steamer uh, passenger ship that would r run uh, people back and forth, and, and uh, so. White Lake was just full of all sorts of water taxis back then, so people would come and, and then these water taxis would take them around to the different resorts. <clears throat> so, turn of the century, there are basically four resorts on, on Duck Lake. Um, again, maybe if we turned it one light off, it might be a little better. Um, I don't know if that's too, is that improved a little bit? Should have done that about 20 minutes. <laughs> um, so, uh, it, uh, Lakeview Farm, which was the Heinz Resort, Heinz Family Walters, uh, they call it Walters Resort, or Duck Lake Inn, Camp Reuben, Lake Park, and then Duck Lake Resort. So, basically, uh, these, these were fairly close in the center of, of, the, um, of the lake. Uh, this is actually on, on the Benson fam uh, family property uh, down about 100 yards from here. You'll be amazed when we see the house, a great big three-story, 20-bedroom house was right over here, and that was called the Duck Lake Resort. Lakeview Farm, um, it was very typical of the people in the area, the proprietor, uh, Christ Hines from Germany, uh, came here in the late 1800s, bought property on, on uh, Duck Lake in 1898, he and his family cleared the land, established a berry farm, and started taking vacationers. By 1920, they expanded the farmhouse to 14 bedrooms, a dining room that could seat 125 guests, had a Model T Ford, and you can see in this picture right here, there's a Model T Ford um, that would go to the Goodrich Dock, pick up guests, and, and bring them back to the resort. <coughs> it operated until approximately 1936, when um, in, in the late 30s, 
the, the resort <coughs> history of the lake kind of kind of died out a, a little bit. Uh, this is the existing home right now. This is the Cobbs's home on, on the lake, 5780. Um, so this house is still standing, and, and that's that house right there. The, the Hines property actually had uh, two or three cottages, um, and, and then uh, across the street. So this is looking. This is Duck Lake Road right here, and, and this is their barn. And these are all raspberry bushes. Um, you, you can see very few trees. The tree line here is along Muskrat. There's Muskrat Lake in the background. But uh, you, you, you look here, there's just no, everything has been lumbered, lumbered off. This is 1919. This is the back side of, of the uh, property. They had a, uh, this is a smokehouse and, and a uh, water tower. Um, it was very uh, normal back then that the, the whole family would be involved in, in the operation of, of these. Um, this is kind of a blow up. There's Mr. Hines right there and, and his kids um, and grandkids. In 1916, they, they built another cottage adjacent that they would rent out. In 1923, they built still another cottage. So uh, it was a pretty, uh, a pretty big, all of the resort operations were pretty formidable. Duck Lake Inn or Walter's Place. Um, can still see these two stone, um, it's 5738, there's today's picture, but you can still, these stone pillars are still on the property. You can see them from the road right now. It was <coughs> operated by Harry Walters and his wife who also came from Germany. They purchased the property adjacent to the Heinz Resort. And by 1920, they had a two-story house, a guest cottage, kitchen, dining, building, ice house, and what's interesting, a, a big dance and pool hall on, down on the lake. And on weekends, this is during Prohibition, but on weekends there's a huge amount of people would come, and they come from all over to, to go to this uh, dance hall. And uh, the Walters <coughs> operated that until Helen passed away in 1955. So this is a, a view from from the barn loft of, of the Lakeview Farm. And this is Duck Lake Road right here. Um, here's here's Duck, Duck Lake. Duck Creek is up in this, this corner. Um, so this is the, uh, the main house of Walter's main house. Um, this is Camp um, Lake Park or Camp Rubin uh, down here. You can see in this uh, piece, uh, this is actually one of our houses. Um, you can see here, that, now this is a, the, the dance hall, but that was actually down on the water level, but it was a, a big building. And again, 1925, the, the uh, uh, Duck Lake Road was basically a two-track. This is the dance hall that was down on the lake. Here's the uh, main house up on Duck Lake Road. This is uh, 1919. but. Um, they had big stairs coming down this big dance hall. Uh, this is a couple years later, this particular picture. You can see the dance hall. What's interesting is I think they were probably more taking a picture of these two guys fishing. I blew that up. And he's got a pretty nice northern pipe there that uh, he's, he's showing off. <clears throat> so you fast forward a few years. In 1925, here's the same dance hall, but now they made it two stories. They put a took the roof off, put another story on it, and, and made it even bigger. So um, quite a, uh, uh, and I'm told years years later, they actually took that down and took it across the street and, and used uh, and rebuilt a building across the street when, when the resort um, sort of died off. But <clears throat> here's an ad on, on Duck Lake Inn, which is, is the Walters place, but you could, uh, have a car, that the car come pick, pick you up at the White Hall and, and bring you to here for a dollar a person. Um, it's uh, Harry Walters proprietor. You could have a car come to Muskegon and pick you up for a dollar fifty. And Duck Lake Resort, this particular house right here um, was a three-story house, 20 bedrooms, and it was literally probably 100, 150 yards 
in that direction. Uh, it was started by another first generation German fam family led by Christ Hesse, family of been stonemasons in Germany dating back to the 1600s. He and his brother Fred came, worked in Chicago. Again, a very common theme, uh, put some money together. In 1893, they bought enough, had enough money to buy the property on the east end of the lake. They uh, cleared the land themselves. They uh, built a three-story uh, home and then started the resort. The first year was in 1902. Um, one of the interesting components of, of this particular resort is, is they were known for a, uh, an acting troupe that they would have every, they had a, a big uh, dozen of actors and they would do a Shakespearean play every uh, weekend. Hmm. We've got some pictures of that as well, but um, Christ Hesse was responsible for building the first bridge over Duck Creek uh, and leading for a shortcut to uh, White Lake and Whitehall. Uh, later, he gifted the bridge and access uh, to the township, which is now Nestrum Road. A few more things on uh, Duck Lake Resort. Main house had 20 bedrooms, seven small cottages. Uh, the Hesse's ran the resort until 1916. Uh, it was closed for a few years. It, it then reopened and, and was uh, YMCA used it extensively. Um, here's a, a, a very old postcard showing uh, people s swimming at the resort. Uh, now here's uh, Christ with a, on a fishing uh, uh, trip, and then and here's another picture of the mansion with an old, uh, uh, an old antique vehicle. Here's some. Uh, pictures of their acting troupe at about 1910, uh, kind of hamming it up and showing it off. Um, we were very f fortunate to, um, uh, Terry Hempel and, and uh, Nate Hesse uh, shared a lot of uh, uh, pretty unique uh, photographs with us over the years. This is uh, three that were in, in that uh, grouping. Th this is a cool, um, I mean, how many of us have been to Duck Lake Channel and had picnics or spent the day there, whatever, well, it's no different a uh, hundred years ago. This is the whole acting troupe, and, you, and they had a, uh, obviously had a, a picnic down at the Duck Lake Channel in the evening, and they had, you can see there's tablecloths, uh, you know, they've got uh, dishes all set up, and, and uh, this is 19, 1910. The, uh, one of the Hesse sons, Herbert, uh, th this this is uh, again. There's so much history that uh, the lake has. It's hard to kind of pick and choose what to, to highlight. But I thought this was, was interesting. When uh, <clears throat> Herbert was 16, farmhand. This is a citation from the uh, Carnegie uh, Foundation that gives out um, awards for uh, uh, valor and courage. But uh, Herbert saved two women that were drowning. In, in Duck Lake, and he w went out, brought them to shore, <clears throat> revived them. Uh, the Carnegie uh, Foundation, Carnegie being in, in Pittsburgh uh, from the coal uh, coal mine, and uh, he they they caught wind of this, and they sent out uh, representatives and interviewed Herbert, and at any rate, he was nominated for um, this award, this this Courage Award, and. Uh, he got a gold watch, $1,000 cash, and this Carnegie medal. But back then, $1,000 cash was an, an awful lot of money. And he went, and, and he got, um, and there's newspaper, a, a lot of uh, press on this. But uh, this is an actual telegram from his sister congratulating him on this. But he took the, the $1,000 and bought 40 acres uh, in, in Fruitland Township, cleared it, took the lumber that he cleared, built his own house, and then um, he was a uh, basically a contractor uh, for most of his life, and he was also one of the um, uh, uh, planning and, and zoning inspectors for Fruitland Township for a, a number of years. <coughs> this is just, again, passing of the early settlers of Duck Lake. Uh, Christ passed in, in 1949, his wife in 1955, um, Christ actually was the uh, caretaker for Camp Shawanasee, the Grand Rapids Boy Scout uh, camp for a number of years after they got out of the resort business. 
The, the next resort, uh, Rubens Lake Park Resort, is uh, at 56.50 actually, and, and um, Chris and I, my wife and I uh, own that home now, and the Neos uh, before us. But um, you, you, again, you look, I mean, there's just no trees. The trees you see are on the hill, and they, they, they were more difficult to, to lumber off, but they just lumbered everything down Duck Lake Road, it was just sand. In 1914, Rudolf Rubin and his brother, uh, Swedish immigrants, purchased four acres on Duck Lake for $600. They built a two-story home, which is this home right here, and they began advertising in the Chicago Tribune. So it was the thing back then, build a home, uh, advertise for vacationers, and, and open it up. The, uh, the, the ad read, uh, bathing, boating, and fishing for $8 a week. Uh, over time, they expanded made this the, the main house and, and the dining hall, and then they had um, seven uh, cottages below that they uh, rented out, and they operated until 1937. When they first started, when they first bought uh, the property, they just, uh, before they had built the uh, home and the cottages below, they had like a tent city, so it was just all these tents uh, that they would rent out. And I thought, um, this was, was kind of cool. Again, it, 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 the uh, clarity is not too good here. But so this is some of the, the people vacationing that week, and uh, this guy was pretty interesting. And again, you can't see it real well here, but I mean, he's got a suit on, he's got a straw hat on, and he's dressed like a little little different attire back then when you went camping. Uh, <laughs> this, this guy right here has got a full suit on. I mean, and this is you know August. Can you imagine having a full suit on? in August and, and you're having fun in canvas tents that must have been 100 or so odd degrees, I don't know. And then the lower picture is a, a picture of the camp kitchen and a couple of the cooks and uh, so the kitchen was actually in a, in a tent as well. Then a few years past, um, 1917, they've got these frame cottages. <clears throat> And they built seven little cottages along the lake, um, and you, your family could rent a cottage. And there's two of these that are still down on the property. Um, it's on the property next door to, to ours, uh, Danzig's uh, property right now. But um, at some point in time, they took two of these cottages and, and put them, married them together, and made one cottage. Um, but the, the rest of the cottages are. Uh, all, all gone, gone, and uh, I'm told that well, one of the cottages ended up over on Van Fleet's property for a number of years, and then um, uh, when the Van Fleet's uh, bought the property, I, I think they moved it up north and, and made a deer cabin on it. But um, this is kind of cool. This is a postcard again of the uh, uh, of the cottages down below the hill, and written this postcard. What it says, it was written on July 22nd, 1919. And this is by the author of the postcard, this woman. It says, this place is run by Rudolf Rubin and his wife of Chicago. Mr. Rubin is of Swedish aristocracy. My dad knew of the family in Sweden. I have to, I have an invite to visit them at the resort and hope to avail myself that privilege and take dinner with them some Sunday. So you just stumble on these postcards, and the pictures are, are kind of neat, but sometimes, um, you know, the, the actual content is, is interesting. This is Lake Park, uh, back in 1917. Um, you can see some boats. Uh, it hasn't changed, in, you know, have some houses down there, but it's interesting if you see this, this tree right here, and these pine trees, they're still towering almost a hundred years later. Just as a, as a footnote, um, so much for the resorts. Uh, to keep within my time frame, uh, an awful lot of information. Uh, could have talked for a long period of time on a lot of different topics, but focused kind of on the early years. But, um, over the last 40 years, Duck Lake's not been without its share of controversy and concern, generally surrounding development and change. And it's interesting to note that this is not a new phenomenon. 
I found this back in, in 1900. In, in, 19, in 1900, there, there was a big a movement underfoot to change the name of Duck Lake to Michelinda Lake. And they actually, uh, uh, the, the group that wanted to change the name to Michelinda, and their thinking was it, it, Duck Lake was too common. There were a couple of other Duck Lakes in Michigan and Michelinda was more sophisticated and it would be better to um, uh, exemplify the business side, the fruit business of, of the area. So they, they, they actually, they actually uh, um, put this down for, for vote in, uh, in, in Lansing and it created an enormous uh, storm of, of, of uh, and, and there's two or three articles on big articles and petitions going around and uh, all, all this uh, uh, controversy and at the, at the end of the day it didn't pass and it died and, and Duck Lake stayed Duck Lake but uh, um, it, back in the day that, that was a big deal. Uh, the other thing that I came across a little similar there was in uh, 1913 there was a big movement to put a railroad up Scenic Drive and across Duck Lake Bridge and um, again, that became very controversial, and then there was a lot of, lot of uh, county commissioners that wanted to do it, and so forth and so on, and uh, it failed. But uh, thank goodness, because could you imagine if uh, Scenic Drive was a railroad, and, and all the you know things that go along with industry and railroads, and, and instead of the, the quaint bridge across uh, Duck Lake was a railroad trestle. So uh, I think we kind of dodged dash the bullet on, on that as well. So um, that's my 35 or 40 minute allocation. And uh, Good question. I don't know. <laughs> Talk about the scout camps, please. Oh, uh, well, scout camps. We had two scout camps on the lake, on the north side. The um, uh, camp uh, Wapenangle was from Evanston, Illinois. Uh, it was formed in, a, in the mid uh, 1920s, and uh, they had uh, basically up to about where the pavilion is right now, and then from the pavilion up to uh, Badeau's property was Camp Shawandasi, which was out of Grand Rapids. So there were two scout camps. Uh, camp Shawandasi started in 1929, and um, I've got an enormous amount of stuff on the scout camps. Um, the dedication was uh, really huge for Shawandasi in 1929. They had two senators, um, and big, big to do. And uh, both uh, scout camps left in uh, 1968. Um, they thought they could sell the property, make a lot of money, and uh, find camps elsewhere. And it was really a mistake for both councils, both Evanston and Grand Rapids, because they went into a recession. They couldn't sell the property. Uh, the, the new camps that they built were nowhere near as nice as these camps. And so the, the, the property, uh, was for sale for a number of years. The Nature Conservancy bought the property, but if you can imagine, uh, 3,800 feet of uh, lakeshore frontage, 400 feet on Lake Michigan, 780 acres, uh, and they were trying to sell it for four years for $750,000 and couldn't sell it. And, uh, and there's a whole backstory to that where developers tried to come in and you know we dodged the bullet on that as, as well because we're very fortunate that the Nature Conservancy bought it and inventoried it until the state could buy it and make a part of it. Dave, would it be possible maybe uh, for next year uh, to do something on the scout camp? I'd love to do something on the scout camp. You're nuts, she said, my way. Okay. <laughs> I worked harder on this for the last week than I do on any of my investment talks to <laughs> cities and pension funds and whatever. Yes, ma'am. It, 
it was um, very well suited for raspberries. I don't know, raspberries must like sandy loam uh, soil. And um, so it was primarily raspberries. But more up here, they had fruit trees, but more down by scenic was all raspberries. Thank you. I, yeah, I, I would say let's, uh, a year from now, it's August, <laughs> maybe we can book you for next August. Sure. <laughs>